All right, thank you, Rachel. Well, tomorrow, millions of Americans will honor the service and legacy of our military men and women. One particular population of our military may not receive as much attention as others. Fortunately, the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center will be shining the spotlight on the service of our native population in the military with a day of gathering and recognition. Joining us now to talk more about the Veterans Day events at IPCC, our boy lad, U.S. Army vet and Zuni and Ho-Chunk member, along with Travis Suazo, the Director of Museum and Cultural Engagement at the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us this morning. Good morning, Chad. Uh, yeah, thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. And, and boy, thank you for your service to our country, thank you. first off. Thank you. Um, so I, I think this is really interesting because a lot of people don't know the level of contributions that Native American soldiers have, have had over the years. So can you share some of the figures and some of those contributions with us? Absolutely. Uh, proportionally, Native Americans have served at higher numbers than any other population in our history. Really? Um, so we're, most people are uh, familiar with the co-talkers. Mm -hmm. Navajo co-talkers, but we've had other tribes represented as throughout our history in terms of co-talkers and their contribution. Okay. And so, and, and boy, you know, I'm, I'm curious to you as, as being a vet uh, to our country, what, what drew you in to serve? What, was it, uh, was it a, a sense of national pride? Was it something that you wanted to, to just do as a young man? What brought you into the military? To my, to my people, I come from the Ho, I was raised among the Ho-Chungara people, and to us, to be a warrior is a, a way of life, and it's instilled within our religion, a lot of our ceremonies. Mm -hmm. We look to our veterans for leadership and their experience to guide us through a lot of the ceremonies. So one of the points that we really stress among our native people is the right, the right as opposed to privileges, the right to speak, the right to dance, the right to lead. So for us, it's, it's a way of life. And uh, again, we very honored, very honored that uh, the Pueblo Culture Center set this day aside for honoring veterans, all veterans, native yeah. and non-native. So we'd like to invite the color guards, everyone to come on mm -hmm. out. Everyone so. come out, absolutely. Well, one of the photos that you were seeing a few minutes ago of uh, Mr. Tony Reyna, who was the, uh, the former Taos governor. So tell us about some of the honors that, uh, that you'll be bestowing upon him tomorrow. Former Governor Tony Reyna is our honoree this year. He's also a uh, World War II Marine veteran, baton death march survivor. Uh, he, is he is currently 99 years old. He'll turn 100 years in February. So we're not only honoring him, but all veterans uh, for their service and contributions to our, to our country and uh, to our tribal communities as well. Wow. That's incredible. That's great. Well, another one of the events that you're going to be doing is a gourd dance. And boy, I think you're going to tell us a little bit about what a gourd dance is and why it's part of the celebration tomorrow. There are many uh, societies, warrior societies in uh, North America, and the gourd dance is a reflection of the Kiowa culture. It was created back in the, uh, or the origin goes back to the early 1700s. It's a very beautiful story, long story short, is that a warrior uh, had gotten separated from his war party and uh, on destitute on the verge of death he heard a very beautiful song and he saw this red wolf he called up and noticed and this red wolf watched this warrior invited him down for food and water and in the process gave him these songs as a gift to take back to his people among the Kiowa people they have the Rough Riders uh, society it's much like the Bear Clan the policemen of the tribe and over the years, you know, it has become a way of life, not only just among the Kiowa, they shared it among the, uh, a lot of the Southern Plains people. It was introduced here in the uh, early 1960s, and it's become kind of a way of life. At one time, it was in honor of a lot of the veterans. Today, in honor of all of our distinguished leaders within our community. So I do invite everyone. Uh, there are a lot of gourd dance societies. I believe in just here in the Southwest, we have about five of them. And wow. again, honoring all nations yeah. all tribe we have even a number of non-native that are also a part of that there are certain initiations that uh, are involved with it so again we invite all gourd dancers to yeah. come on out and all, all folks yeah as, as you said we're inviting you know native non-native military personnel and also to the public so travis if people want more information on the events happening tomorrow where's the best place to get it best place to get information is on our website indianpueblo.org Follow us on Facebook. We're constantly posting pictures and information. Fantastic. Well, gentlemen, thank you for the honors. Uh, and again, boy, thank you for your service to our nation. For more information as to what's happening tomorrow at the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center.